in Canada because a boot. Wow. It's a boot. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Welcome back to Trail Trust Garage. We have today Jake Dan Cruz of the GL 1500. There's a few things that still need to be done. Uh, that crash bar or the highway board needs to be fixed. There's some fasteners I want to clean up, make pretty. Um, I got a chrome paint pen coming just to kind of clean that up. It won't look perfect, but it'll look better. We're going to buff that up. Uh, it's it's down to the plastic and parts, so it's never going to look like this again, but we'll get it sort of looking okay. Uh, but as you can see, we got our mirrors fixed, and they're good and solid. Like, that's just not going anywhere. The uh, the mechanism for the windshield works now. Like, it'll lower, uh, raise and lower. These are now uh, bolted on properly. Uh, they weren't flopping around before with stainless hardware. Uh, a lot of the chrome pieces now, uh, like the fasteners and stuff that are rusted with these plastic chrome caps, like I got rid of them. And using some stainless steel island head cap heads. Uh, levers are back. That brake is still a little spongy. We're going to address that. We did the rear brakes. So for now, let's get this thing started up here. Okay, side stands down. Let's choke it on. This generation of Goldwing was not fuel injected. It's still carbureted. Um, there's some wiring issues back here and I don't know what exactly uh, is going on. So these panels are still off just because these side lights come as reflectors and you can buy aftermarket lights to go light kits for these. But somebody wired something up weird on this side because they're just like little wimpy incandescent bulbs. They really only show up at night. But when you apply the brake on the other side, they go out and here they don't. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Now we're getting smoke out both exhausts here. So what happens sometimes with these engines, horizontally opposed engines, is uh, the fact that we've got uh, oil will settle into the heads and that should clear. I mean, it's it's it, it's cold out anyway, so you're going to get a little bit of that. There should be a switch somewhere that opens up these and it puts hot air on your feet, but I can't remember where that switch is. See, all the smoke has settled down there. I have no idea how much gas is in this thing. Remember the stereo is not working. Ooh, back brake works good, front brake not so much. So we definitely got to get that bled. And remember on these gold wings they got link braking systems, so uh, they uh, this only runs one front disc. The rear brake runs the other front disc. So. It's hard to kind of pump and then bleed because there's so much space between the, like you just you can't do a one man. So I need two people to kind of help you with it. It's hard to do unless you get like a speed bleeder, which I'm a big fan of speed bleeders. Oh, there we go. Overdrive, all right. I mean, now these bikes just handle like freaking beautiful. Like what a joy to ride these bikes are. And I mean, she's perfectly stable. Like it's just, Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And we got a pretty good front brake now. It's cold, so I'm still not, you know, these tires are cold. It's it's freaking freezing out. <laughs> so I'm still gonna take it easy on these on these turns. But um, you know, a couple weeks ago this thing was in a junkyard. Uh, well, not because it was junk, just because it got hauled there after the accident. But it definitely wasn't driving. It wasn't moving around under its own power. And you know what? With some with some warm clothing. Um, it's perfectly fine to drive these things in this type of weather, right? Like it's, I have no idea what the temperature is, but I'm going to guess it's like a single digit degrees. Like I would be shocked if it was 10 degrees Celsius. So very shocked. So I'm assuming it's, it's probably like four or five degrees, which is what it's been for the last week or so. Uh, except Saturday, Sunday, we had some good weather on Sunday. Uh, while the sun was up, it was really nice. However, I was working on Sunday, so... I couldn't take advantage of it. But I did want to get out and get a maiden ride in here. So, awesome. Yeah, this bike feels so good. And how many kilometers on this thing? So we got 100 150,000 kilometers on it. And that, that's just nothing for these, these engines, right? Like, again, even on the 1200, somebody, or the 11, my 1100, you know, I get asked, you know, why would you buy a bike with over 100,000 kilometers on it? And I'm like, well, would you buy a Civic, a Honda Civic with over 100,000 kilometers? Well, yeah, of course, you know. Well, that's what you've got. You've got that Honda engineering. Basically, you've got, you know, that technology in these engines. And uh, 
no, nobody buys these things to abuse them, so. Yeah, this is just, this is just beautiful. Beautiful. So yeah. So the radio is messed up. It was acting up on Dave before. Uh, he had, he said he thought the speakers were blown, they were crackling and, and whatnot, and they very well could be. I mean, there's rust and corrosion, the, the uh, shiny coatings on the, on, the dry, on the cones are, are all corroded. And, I mean, it very well could have been the speakers, but I, never, I could never get this thing to work. So um, now, I mean, you, you kind of, it's hard to see the radio frequencies on because, because of the uh, broken LCD that's in the dash there. So, you know, but you wait for the ST, and then you know you're in a on a, you're on a station with stereo. So, but it, it, I just never got anything. No, no pops, fizzes, static, nothing. So, I don't know whether rain got in there, you know, while it was at the wreckers. I, I I just don't know. So, you can get these fixed. There's a company called Sierra Electronics which fixes these things, um, but it's two hundred dollars US just for the repair. Uh, and then you've got a shipping and shipping there and back from Canada is not cheap. It's just, I don't know. Plus you've got a tape deck and a stair and a radio. And um, if you want to retain the CB and integrated uh, intercom functions with the JM headsets and everything, then great, you get it repaired. But if you don't have JM headsets and the patch cords to go with them to plug into this spot right down here, then they're not cheap, they're expensive too. So to replace all that stuff, you're probably looking at, to repair the radio and replace the headsets, you're looking at $1,000 um, after after uh, exchange and taxes and stuff. And it's just like, you know, on a bike that's probably only worth, you know, 2,500 or so, like, I don't know, man, let's have to have the value of the bike just, and, and we've had to do tires and, and, and other stuff to fix this up. That's just a lot of money to throw at this thing. So for a hundred bucks, uh, we're gonna replace the stereo with a Marine, uh, Bluetooth and uh, FM headset or head unit and uh, it's going to require some cool uh, I, I don't I don't know what I'm going to 3d print <clears throat> a plate for this um, I'm not going to hack anything like I'm going to try very careful to make sure that the uh, the wiring harness that I hack into it is is easily convertible back you know if somebody wants to get this fixed like if Dave sells this on next year and somebody wants to replace the stereo in it uh, I'm going to make sure that everything's really easily re repaired back to factory I don't I don't believe in, in hacking main wiring harnesses if you, at all if you, if you um, follow my channel. So I think probably I'll have to get the, the, power, output, uh, the power inputs and the, um, doo -doo 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 and the speaker inputs, but I think I can pull those pins out of the connector and then, and then use Japanese style connectors to, to wire it to the new head unit and leave the, leave the harness, uh, the rest of the harness as is just under the fairing. That way you can just pull the pins back out, put them back into the, the plug and plug it back in. Um, worst case, I have to splice into those wires, uh, but I'll do it f far enough back that it'll be easy to splice, uh, repair the splice. Um, you know, if you ever want to hook them back into the main connector. So all that stuff is, is, is if it's done right, it's possible. And we can uh, we can do that. All right. Well, that's it, I think, for the, uh, the quick test ride of the GL1500. Uh, I think we're good to go. I really do. Oof. So for Jaffa Trail Trash Garage, catch you on the next video. You know we're in Canada because... A boot! <laughs> it's a boot! <laughs> Sorry.